Good morning, dear friends. We were doing the computation of capital gain under certain special cases. Yesterday, we just covered two cases. Now, having continued with the topic, today we will just try to discuss the computation of capital gain on, from transfer of bonus shares, number one. After that, we will do the computation of capital gain in respect of right shares. So, Taking the first topic, the first matter, capital gain on the transfer of bonus shares. For this purpose, for the computation of such capital gain on the bonus shares, we will have to visualize the different situations. Which situations when the bonus share may give benefit or capital gain to the SSC. The different situations may be summarized as number one situation would be the cost of acquisition of bonus shares allotted before 1st April 1981. This is one situation where the SSC might have been allotted the bonus shares prior to 1st April 1981. I think we have already done a lot on the significance of the 1st April 1981 if a person is owning the capital asset before 1st April 1981 or on 1st April 1981 then he has got the option to choose the fair market value as on that day. So, based on that, the provision in respect of the acquisition of bonus shares which have been acquired by the SSC before 1st April 1981 would be he can take the market value of this bonus share as the cost of acquisition, the market value as on 1st April 1981 and this is the case when the bonus shares have been acquired by the SSC before this date. The second situation can be the cost of acquisition allotted on or after April 1981. It means there is a demarcation between these two. Number one is that the bonus shares which have, which have been allotted to the SSC before 1st April 1981 and the bonus shares which have been allocated or allotted after 1st April 1981. In this case, the cost of acquisition of the bonus share would be taken as well. This is very very important. You please always remember if there is a bonus share to the SSC if he has been allotted the bonus shares after 1st April 1981, then the cost of such bonus shares shall be reckoned as nil for the day the cost of acquisition. And the period holding period is also very important because this is this period is very important from the point of view of calculating the long term capital gain or the short term capital gain. The period of holding shall be determined from the date of allotment of bonus shares and not from the date of acquisition of original shares. This is very very important. Because the long term or short term capital gain shall be reckoned with respect to the, the date of allotment of the bonus shares and not from the date of allotment of the original shares. So, we can understand this particular concept of uh, acquisition of bonus shares with an example. I think the things would be more clear to you. Here is an example. On 1st July 2006, Mr. S hold the following equity shares in A limited. The date of acquisition has been given in the second column and the third column is the total investment which he has made on these shares. So, 1000 shares, original shares, the date of acquisition was 26th April 1969 and the total investment on the original share was 1 lakh. Then, the first bonus was allotted to him and 500 bonus shares were there and these shares were acquired by the SSC, Mr. S, on 10th May 1980. The total investment would be nil because I just told you the cost of bonus shares would be treated as nil. It will not be taken into account. We we'll just see the treatment in respect of these shares because both these shares have been original shares and 500 bonus shares they have been taken before 1st April 1981. So we will just see. The third, the second bonus of 750 share was given to him on October 15, 1988. The total investment is taken as a nil. And 1125 bonus shares, this is the third bonus which was acquired by him on 18th May 2006. So, in total he is just holding 3375 shares. And all these shares, they were sold by him on 30th of September 2006 at a rate of 600 rupees per share. However, the fair market value of the share as on 1st April 1981 is 8 rupees per share. 
Find out the capital gain chargeable to tax for the assessment year 2007-2008. So this is the question. Now we we'll just try to uh, have a solution and we we'll just try to understand it. How the treatment would be given in respect of the bonus shares. First of all, we we'll just see we have just bifurcated the cost of acquisition of shares, different bonus shares, including the original share. So all the shares of 3,375. They have been sold in September. So the sales consideration in respect of original share will be six lakh rupees. Means all the shares have been sold at the rate of six hundred rupees per share. The bonus share five hundred, seven hundred fifty, and eleven twenty-five. The sales consideration has been rather a portion in the form of original shares and bonus share one, two, and three. From this sales consideration. We will deduct the cost of acquisition, and we will just see the index cost of acquisition because this index cost of acquisition shall be calculated in respect of those original shares and bonus shares which have been acquired by the SSC before 1st April 1981. So based on that, the cost of acquisition, index cost of acquisition in respect of original shares. Of one thousand comes to five lakh nineteen thousand, and in respect of five hundred bonus shares which were allotted to the SSC before nineteen eighty one, it comes to twenty thousand seven hundred sixty. So we can reduce this cost of acquisition from the sales consideration, and the resulting figure would be. However, resulting figure in respect of original shares would be the long term capital gain would be eighty one thousand, and in respect of first bonus shares. The long-term capital gain is two lakh seventy-nine thousand two hundred and forty. In the third case, because these shares were allocated allotted to him after nineteen eighty-one, so the cost of acquisition in such a case shall be treated as nil, zero cost of acquisition. So in the third case, miss in the second bonus, the long-term capital gain would be four lakh fifty thousand. However, the final bonus shares which were Allotted to him on 18th May 2006. In this case, the short-term capital gain would be generated to the SSC, and the short-term capital gain would be nothing but the total sales consideration which he has received because the cost of acquisition would be nil. So this is the way. I mean, that way we can calculate the long-term or short-term capital gain in respect of the bonus shares. Which have been acquired by the SSC during the previous year. So, next we will just see how to give the treatment in respect of the right shares. The cost of acquisition in different situations may be summarized as under. These are the different situations by which an SSC can get the right share. First situation is the original share. Naturally, once you have got the original shares, so you may be given some right. In this case, once you are holding your original shares and you have been offered the right, in this case, the amount you have actually paid for acquiring the right shares against these original shares would be treated as the cost of acquisition. That is number one situation. The second situation can be you have got a right, but you don't want to subscribe to this right. Rather, you have sold this right. It means you have just renounced this right. Which was given to you in favor of some other person. In this case, you are you are getting some amount in consideration of your having renounced this right. So this the amount which is sold lies shall be treated as a short term capital gain. And the third situation is the right right shares which are acquired by the SSC by exercising the right entitlement. Similarly, in this case also. The amount actually paid by the taxpayer or by the SSC for acquiring the right share shall be treated as a cost of acquisition. And the right shares which have been purchased by the person in whose favour the right entitlement has been renounced. In this case, for example, you are not having any shares and you have been given the right. So in this case. You will have to pay the premium in respect of the right. One, you are just getting the right share from some other person. So in this case, the cost of acquisition in your hand would be the the purchase price of the share 
plus the amount of amount which you have paid to the person for purchasing the right. So that would be treated as the the total cost of acquisition. Uh, I just want to stress on last point. This is the case when you are not holding any shares of the company, and what you do, you just purchase the right shares from the market. And for purchasing the right shares, what you are paying first, you are just paying the premium to the seller in respect of the right entitlement. Then you will have to pay the amount of right to the company. It means in both the cases, if you just add up both the purchase price and the amount paid to the person, it will be the total cost of acquisition of such right shares in your hand. So these are the different three four situations by which you can calculate. The capital gain in respect of right shares. Thank you very much.